intrepid viewers here i am coming to you as promised from athens oh, how good is that sentence yes so the home of democracy and also philosophy and i've been getting all philosophical in the last few days so i remembered i was last here in greece in 2007 and people were already doing it tough and that was before the global financial crisis but i was impressed always by how generous people were who were working for such low wages and uh, having a really really hard time but so open-hearted and i remembered I was with a friend and we were getting on a boat to sail to Italy and there were all these young boys and sort of roaming around the port and very young boys, like 10 to 14. And we were both sociologists. So we said, who are these boys? What's happening? And they were from Armenia. So they'd run from Armenia desperately looking for work, but they were too young to work legally and they couldn't go back because they'd be sent to jail and they were in limbo. And what was amazing was because they were stuck there for so long, the restaurant owners and the kiosk owners and stuff, every night when they shut up, they would leave out food and drink for these boys. And since then, Greece has been the first stop for hundreds of thousands of Syrian and Afghani refugees coming through Turkey, then they try and get to Greece, then they try and get further into Europe. And just recently, I saw on Australian television, and you might have seen as well, the Greek army was sent in to turn back these dinghies and boats from Turkey. And I thought, oh, well, people are worn out, their compassion is worn out. It's They've been doing this for 13 years, you know. But no, when we were talking to Greeks here, they said, no, people were horrified in the town where the army was sent and they kicked the army out of the town after the, it went on the news and said, you can't do this. There are children on those boats. And so they themselves stood up against the army and then took food and water to the refugees trying to get in. And I thought, it's interesting. It's interesting culturally, but it's interesting on all sorts of levels that we in more affluent countries have got this compassion fatigue, but people with so little still have so much to give. And it got me in this philosophical mode. So I thought, what is it that we have to learn? I use the word we um, from the Trump experience. And I did a video, oh, ages ago, a year and a half ago or something, is Trump a blessing in disguise? Uh, I'm amazed it got any views, really. And I thought I'd update that idea. What are the lessons we need to learn from the Yeti? So that's what I'm focusing on today. All right, so let's have a look. I'm using the Fate Shifter cards. They're very beautiful. There we go, Fate Shifters. And they're the ones that come with the astrology cards as well. Okay, oh, I'm warming up now. Okay, let's have a look. I haven't done a Celtic cross for a while. I do my version. Um, so I'm going to do quite a big spread on this. So what are the lessons from the Trump horror show? What are the lessons? What are the lessons? What are the lessons? Oops, what fell out? Oh. Might have been a bad shuffle. Let me put them back and keep going. Queen of Pentacles, Four of Swords. If they want to come out, they'll come out again. So what is the lesson for all of us 
in America and globally. Reach a long way. Here I am in this very nice B&B. All right, let's have a look. Oh, my cards are upside down. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. Lordy. All right. Now, right in the middle here, our signifier is the Ace of Wands. New beginnings with direction and energy. So this setting the tone for the reading, what are we going to learn on the other side of this experience? And Wands of Fire and Fire purges and begins again. So... It's the hand grasping the wand, right? So in other words, people taking up the wand of fire. What's across that? The challenge is justice. It's all about justice and it's all been about justice. And we need to think about justice in a different way. It's not just law and order stuff. It is social justice. So we need to act on social justice to move forward. All right. So underneath this, this is the current crapola and tensions and the country being divided and people fighting. And it's getting very ugly. The Five of um, Swords is an ugly card there's a ruthlessness to the five of swords. So the opposite of ruthlessness is compassion and vice versa, you'd have to think. So this is the lack of compassion. This is winning, I'm all right. Who cares what happens to the other people? But this is people also walking away from that thinking. And what I've been struck by here in Greece is the people who are struggling to get by one-on-one -on -one, there's more support for each other and people less well off. In Australia, the UK and the US, it's more a feeling, oh, I can't protest, I'm working two jobs. Oh, I can't help anyone else. I'm working really hard to pay the power bill. We go into our shelves, in a sense, under duress and pressure, and we're being asked to look at that. So behind, in the past, it was better. People were able to work together. But this is past now, and this is what's underneath the energy now. Can you see a more marked difference? So the ability to hear other people and listen to other people's point of view and to be tolerant, um, and encourage diversity and all those things that were happening in our countries before we had neoliberalism and the neocons and this hard right has been attacked, literally attacked here, right? Now, up here is interesting. The overarching view, the lovers, it's very similar to what used to be. So we have the answer. The answer is to be more loving and it's not just about, you know, biological uh, or romantic love or the Adam and Eve story type love. This is people love. This is a bigger reading. It's not a little sort of local, localised personal reading. This is all of us. So we need to reclaim this energy. Now, what is across the lover's card here is the Empress. So, considering this could be the obstacle or the challenge, it's 
all about generosity and new ideas and fertility of ideas. And the Empress also represents literal fertility in terms of children. And we've got to a stage, my first digression, Bill, is I'm not sure about America, but I'd put money on it being the same. In Australia, the millennials I know, and I know a lot, both from teaching and um, the ones that are around in my life and stuff, very few of them are having children. They can't afford housing, and they're even if they're university graduates, they're not earning much money. And if they're not, they're certainly not earning enough money to really live on, have a life and plan. Everyone's casualized, so you can't get a mortgage, etc., etc. So they're having fewer and fewer children. Now we could say the world needs fewer people. I've never bought into that argument. And I won't spend six hours explaining why, but I will say just quickly, the problem is not too many people, it's what people do with their lives. So, you know, a family of 14 in Mali actually use less energy than one American or one Australian, you know. So it's not about um, we need fewer people. But what this is about is if we're not, if our children are not comfortable having children, it says there's something really wrong, really wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, back we go. So the more bountiful empress energy is what we need to tap into. We need to trust in the love. And it sounds kind of hippie or simplistic, but in this age of deep, dark friction and complexity, this is actually a real challenge. To be nice to people who are fundamentally hideous is not easy in life. So that's that empress energy coming through. The atmosphere affecting us all, the wheel of fortune. We are at a karmic spin of the wheel, how we individually and collectively handle this will determine the future, the future for the planet, the future for children and grandchildren, etc. It's an absolute karmic point. And I keep saying I would encourage you to look at the political astrologers who have a bigger picture and a longer time frame for this. We're all sweating on November 2020, but really it's part of a deep um, Pluto, Saturn, Uranus cycle that's with us till 2024. We're going to be bonded here, second digression viewers, we're going to be bonded for the next few years. So regardless of how this plays out in November, it's a matter of keeping the faith and keeping the inspiration, living our lives differently, differently. Because if we don't, then we're really no better than Trump and the hideous GOP. We've got to show the way with love, light, but also knowledge. All the figures in this, if you have a look, there's the eagle, the angel, the bull and the lion, figures of power. They've all got books. And some say that this card, the books in this card represent the Akashic record, our individual and collective, collective karmic record. So the wheel is turning. The world. This does affect everybody. Trump affects everybody. Uh, the old saying, America sneezes and we get a cold. Um, America has been hugely powerful, both literally and symbolically. But this is the world and it's a two-way street. America needs to look outwards for both historical examples and new ways forward. And I understand that when you come from a country like America that has a very strong national narrative. This is the greatest country in the world. It's really hard to challenge that. 
So even when something's radically wrong, like a starved education system and the world's worst health care, it's hard for people to look at that. But the world card also, I found in personal readings, is my card of diversity and different ethnicities. I'm just here, people, to remind us all, the majority world is not Anglo-Saxon, right? It's a big wide world out there and it's all colours and it's all religions and this is about religious tolerance as well. So the world card couldn't be more important with the Wheel of Fortune. In other words, if you think about climate change, there's no point one pocket doing this and one pocket doing that. If we don't act globally, there'll be nothing to fight over. Okay, so coming up now, that's the atmosphere and leading in now to the next phase of our challenge. This is the Queen of Wands. Now, because it's a, a bigger reading, I don't think this is a general person. I think this is women's energy coming through. There, um, there's massive disappointment about Liz Warren being out of the race now. Let's hope she still gets a significant role in a new administration. But it's female energy in the collective. And I love the black pussycat. That's hinting at um, the familiar in the old witchy days you know, woman's relationship with animals, but the very deep version of the Queen of Wands, she speaks to justice, justice, fairness, and sharing of resources. Okay, so, so. so here we have, this is the short-term outcome card, the Ace of Cups, short term in this context, like a year from now, I'm pleased, pleased enough. It's a new start again. We started with an ace and to a certain extent, we're finishing with an ace. So it'll be new again. We know cups of water, water is about emotion, but it's also about creativity. And the Queen of Wands is a great advocate for the arts. <laughs> And we need creative and generous solutions. We need to have empathy. We need to have compassion and to realise we are all part of the world. So if we don't have compassion for others, we are lost. So looking at this cycle here, this is a bountiful emotional energy. Further out, and a nice twin, if you like, a bookend to the Queen of Wands, we have the King of Cups. The King of Cups, the father of the nation. Now, given no women are going to be president, this could be Biden's energy. As intrepid viewers are well aware, I'm not a bad um, Biden fan. I think he hasn't got the energy. He doesn't really want to be there, but that almost doesn't matter. This is symbolic father of the nation stuff. I don't see it as Bernie, I have to say. He's got more fire to him or even more air. This is Biden energy. So if Biden gets up, let's hope he chooses a woman VP because he needs someone who has more energy than he's simply got to give to do, um, actually get things going in a new administration. Praise to the gods that that's what we're talking about here. But this is his healing paternal energy. Well, could have been a lot worse than that, folks. So let's be grateful for that. Now, because I'm dipping into the astrological world more, I just want to do a little three card thing on what's our astrological advice coming up, let's say for March, for all of us. 
let's have a look our astro advice for March our astro advice for March Jupiter, the Hermit, and Pisces. Oh, interesting. So this is my Jason Marmoa card. And because I spend a lot of my life with Polynesians, and Jason Marmoa is Polynesian, I'm very familiar with this sort of male physicality. And these guys have these huge warrior bodies, but they actually have very big hearts. And Jupiter represents luck and opportunity. So even though many of us might be feeling down in the dumps, Jupiter is activated now and Jupiter governs expansion and expansion of ideas. The Hermit, many of us individually are in retreat. But the hermit is more than that. We're speaking once again about all of us. So we need to learn to look inwards and tap into our more spiritual selves because you have the arcane world of the heavens, the celestial world and the mundane world. And let's face it, lots of us get locked in the mundane world. It's hard to avoid. But this is about the inward search so you've got the energy of expansion of ideas and opportunity to do more soul searching and what form that soul searching takes is very piscean and watery and again the creative um regular intrepid viewers will remember i was lamenting that we haven't got the music for the revolution that inspired and joined us together in the 60s and 70s. And there needs to be, again, more creative ways of bringing people together. So we're being asked to do some serious soul searching. This is quite a fierce depiction of Jupiter, but Jupiter is generally one of the good guys and he's also my ruling planet, moi. So picking up on this energy that needs a creative outlet, not a warrior outlet. In other words, more love, Nick, less war is the go. All right then, beloved viewers. So big shout out to you all. And I'll come back to you with one of my more cynical readings very soon in the next few days as I become progressively inspired. But I want to just take this opportunity to share with you the crap, pardon about the language, that comes with what Trump represents is the global challenge. It's absolutely the global challenge. So how do we deal with it is up to us all. So love, love. We all need more love. Oh, so I'm off to have a souvlaki or something fabulous to eat, and I'll come back to you really soon. So ciao. Bye.